Good midday to you. Uh, I want to do a COVID science and season's recent message on where are the fathers of the professions, work fields of the nation, where are the fathers of the home, what happened to them, why are there are so many stones, scorpions and serpents in the work fields. We'll get to that, but first we want to do, I want to do a little COVID uptake. Now what has been happening is Henry, uh, the Henry Ford Company in Detroit did an extensive uh, a trial with hydroxychloroquine, zinc and astromycin and they undeniably proved that hydroxychloroquine is effective. Many other trials have also proved this. Uh, so the push to have remdesivir as the drug of choice without any clinical trial proof is what's going on now. Now, uh, for, for a length of time hydroxychloroquine was said to be bad because President Trump touted it. Now, Dr. Fauci has touted Remdesivir without any evidence and uh, President Trump has accepted that and America has mass stocked whatever Remdesivir is available in the world. So hydroxychloroquine five day treatment is only about $10 max. It's an unbranded drug, uh, but Remdesivir, uh, the course of treatment which is intravenous, full of side effects, unproven drug, but it is now given. Uh, and consider the drug of choice and that will cost not much 2340 US dollars per person. Uh, so I have done this in great detail why a very effective cheap drug is being jettisoned to have a very expensive drug. So because the drug is so expensive, a lot of side effects and has to be given intravenous which is very, very uh, unacceptable in especially developing countries. Even in a, you know, every intravenous injection has its own problems, very costly. So everybody who says, we need the vaccine, we need the vaccine. Why? Because the drug is costly. But it's, uh, hydroxychloroquine is available. India approved, Indian Council of Medical Research approved with 40,000, with 40,000 uh, workers, health workers, that hydroxychloroquine prevents uh, uh, prevents uh, infection in 55%. Now, Dr. Fauci also said even if a vaccine is just 50% effective, we'll have it. What is that for? What is the meaning of that? And now the Oxford vaccine has, is going on. Now, they are clearly saying us what we all, always knew, that antibody response is not the thing to look for immunity. You have to see how T cell memory and innate immunity is established, established by a vaccine. So there's reports that constantly say uh, the vaccine is effective and there was a very good antibody uh, response is really garbage and rubbish. It's really deception for the masses. Once upon a time, religion was opium of the masses. Now upon a time, entertainment and science like entertainment or yeah, science that looks like entertainment has become the opium of the masses. You will say that's a strong statement. So I'm Dr. Altman, is from Sri Lanka. My last substantive post was as head of department of a state medical faculty. I'm published on PubMed. You can, my, my long name is BLJ Mendes. I am Dr. Light Mendes. I have published on both names. So you can check me up on migraine, irritable bubble syndrome, NSAIDs, low dose aspirin, L dopa, levodopa. I have published on all these subjects. Uh, so what I'm saying is with, uh, what shall I say, with gravity, uh, that uh, when vaccines are being spoken of, the initial antibody response is not the issue. It's temporary anyway. What is the issue is, does the vaccine produce long-term T-cell memory so that the body is geared up with innate immunity? Now, many vaccines, the Moderna vaccine by Gavi, that is Bill Gates' company, does not talk about it. The Sinovac and Chinese vaccines do not talk about it, but Oxford people are talking about it. However, before the clinical trials are available, uh, AstraZeneca has now ordered 
two million doses of the vaccine and they have made contracts with European Union also. And US is passing two billion dollars to make the vaccine uh, free of charge. All this is before vaccine efficacy, side effects have not been proved. So what's this game, isn't it? You understand it's a game. Cheapest effective drug is disqualified with all kinds of epidemiological or statistical panjandrums, I call them. Because when they do research now, they have the right language, uh, randomized clinical trial, placebo control, double blind, but they hide the raw data and they do such so many strata of statistical ratification the end result can be completely different from the raw data. So we have to go back to observational cohort studies because this word, the gold standard randomized clinical trials have become the playground and, for, or, uh, and f fraud of epidemiologists or pharmacologists in epidemiology. That's the problem. So that's where the vaccine story goes. Uh, WHO is prophesying, I mean speculating, that oh, Africa is going to have a wave, going to have a wave. And uh, we know that when infection starts spreading, uh, and if people are not careful, things are, some things are going to happen. In Sri Lanka, we have had a problem with a drug rehab center where they have been spreading and we think it's almost contained. Uh, so, uh, Professor Gupta, she's a lady, uh, she has said in Oxford, she's epidemiology, she, uh, she surmises with certain statistics that uh, they may already have herd immunity, the bad word, you know, because so many people are having immune antibodies. So, but then they have to get on to see whether they really have T cell immunity. But that is also current. Uh, so, where is the vaccine? How will the political... Now, uh, Bill Gates says you'll have to get many doses of the vaccine. Uh, Dr. Fauci says even if it's 50% whack it. And then another vaccine says a little more. This is effective for strain G614. Take that vaccine also. Now, the, uh, then there's another vaccine that says this is effective for D614. Take that also. So global zones having different strains and global zones divided among the big pharma having different vaccines. And this is going to be a multi-billion, billion dollar industry. But in addition, the chip, because this vaccine uh, will have to be Australia's own vaccine, China's own vaccine, if you are traveling to those countries, Europe's own vaccine, and even in Europe there might be Spain virus, Italian virus. So do you understand why there's so much talk about that virus in Brazil and this virus in Russia and so on? Because they want to promote a whole lot of vaccines and vax them all till everybody is immune compromised. I have done this before. If you keep giving many antigens, one after the other, in a single vaccine, multivalent, or in many doses, one after the other, you just rev up the immune system to go adaptive, uh, and a lot of antibodies, they are only destroying specific pro-resolver molecules and you'll be low on immunity while high on all kinds of antibodies and interleukins. It's a little technical subject. So since I have written on it, please refer my blog, drlazmindisblog.wordpress.com. Uh, also, if you would uh, write to our send a WhatsApp to plus 94 then we can, I can send you some clips I have done before this. Uh, then also, uh, there is no conspiracy theory. This is factual science. When science becomes fake, uh, people have floated really valuable pharmacology blogs. Uh, so if you would refer up sciencemag.org, that's coordinated or facilitated by Derek Lowe, L-O-W-E, you will get a lot of good, true scientific discussion, debate, uh, why, because why has this, why have these blogs become a reality? Because people have been seeing over the last 20 years the, this, this catchword, randomized clinical trial, has become a bogey, a mask uh, to hide raw data. 
and give statistical stratifications that obfuscate the actual result and bring completely an opposite one. This started with the Jupiter trial for statins. I call it statisticin. Uh, you can check my blog on all this. Then I want to get on to this season's reason. Where are the fathers? Uh, so, here is a little statement. Fathers are they who share with you more than the textbook. Uh, then fathers are they who add into your life what you can't get online webinar. So the world is pushing each man for himself. Of course, the world doesn't say God for all. The world says each man for himself. Uh, three, the fathers have come up the ladder and help you trace for yourself the rungs you can master. They make it look as if it's doable. Real fathers want you to do better than them. That's why family is so pivotal. Break the family, you break the world. I repeat, break the family, you break the world. So if you think there is a, there is a, a connived effort to break the family. You know why. It'll break the world. It'll break schools. It'll break education. It'll break, break relationships. It'll break the work fields. That's what. Few people, uh, online maestros, masters, owners, will own all the trade. Right now, uh, five people have become quadruple rich when they have online platforms for all other people's products. So other, people's are, other people are manufacturing with great difficulty. Middleman shop is obliterated and uh, online uh, merchants become extremely rich. If you think there's some kind of buccaneering, uh, the day the pirates operated in the high seas, internet has become high seas piracy, yes. Uh, four, they have your fathers, huh? They have your advance in their heart more than company targets in their head. They have your advance in their heart more than company targets in their head. You will remember them long after you leave them and try not to lose them. Six, if you are wise, you will not lose them. They are not corporate branded. Fathers are fathers. Uh, yes, uh, that's what fathers are. Uh, then, uh, uh, seventh point, fathers give you next step and next stretch. Mothers make you safe with what you have. Mothers make you safe inside you. So mothers teach you practice intimacy. Fathers get you to the next step and the next stretch. So dad, when you come home, whether your child is three years, 13 years, even 23 years, try with him a next step and a next stretch. That's what fathers give. So fathers give competence, confidence, and certainty, putting it the three A Fitch rating, if you may, a firm. That's about their personality. There's nothing to do with. Uh, that's nothing to do with their ability. It's their person who do affirm. Yes, son. Two, you accreditation. That that what which is also appreciation. Appreciation is. Uh, what shall I say? Appreciation is uh, qualitative. Accreditation is uh, quantitative. You, and of course you have to be fair, true, just, uh, honest. Uh, so accreditation to the amount he's able. Then you have attestation, uh, which really makes him know he's legally confirmed by his father. So that's the 3A Fitch rating. Father has to do this before he goes to the Corporate. Father has to do this. Dad, you really have to do this, okay? Uh, so this is about what the father gives and what the mother gives. So before the age of three, mother's bonding is very important. Now it is known, even in the womb, mother bonds. So we have in my lectures, digital talk lectures, so I have a lot of research on this. Last, uh, last year, July 27th, I presented to SLMA an academic seminar on how the digital screen ruins career curriculum, uh, choices and character, brings alienation. Uh, please refer it up. If you want a copy of Aura Hard Copy, send me your postal address since posting is possible. And if you want a soft copy, please send a WhatsApp to plus 94 77 49 59 214. So in my series, I have done 
COVID science talks, this is about the 43rd. I have done digital science talk and lots on it on, on my YouTube, Dr. Lalit Mendes. And I have done spiritual talks. So when you are asking me, you have to say whether it is COVID science, digital science or uh, spiritual talks that you are asking from me. So we are at this point, point number seven, that Father gives stretch, next step and next stretch which leads to competence, confidence and certainty and mother makes it internally safe. So under the age of three, mother, mother's bonding is very important. So we tell ladies, even when you are pregnant, though you have to work, speak to your child, take a little time, think intentionally, all that matters for bonding and for wiring of brain. So inattention, ADHD is lack of attention. In the first three years, child ends up with ADHD. That's my thesis on ADHD. And the therapy for that is empathic, empathic motor therapy. We uh, innovated it seven years ago and Harvard has got onto it. They call it Fit Kids. You can Google and see. Also, you can Google empathic motor therapy and put my name, empathic motor, M-O-T-O-R therapy. You will find it. So that's, that's a little about this. While I'm on the fatherhood subject, I just spoke about the fractures and how the digital screen alienates the child. That's why this topic came in. So remember point number seven, dad, you give next stretch, next step. Fathers do that. And then fathers don't break the elasticity, they stretch. Father knows to stretch and then wait for the child to adjust or the senior knows to stretch for the junior to adjust. So you don't put him on a corporate target that will stretch him and crack him. That's what the corporate can do, isn't it? Stretch him with the target, he, maybe he can achieve it. Maybe he's a maverick, he, he may be a master in marketing. But by the age of 35, he's gone. He has given all his energy, no strength for family. So please, corporate magnet, you must love people to have strength enough for their family. Family is coexistence. And there's a father who is called God. He, he designed all this because fatherhood comes from God. So you have heard this famous prayer, our father. Yeah, you most of you know, you have heard that there's a thing like that. It also involves give us this day our daily bread. So don't compromise the father in you for the bread. Bread is necessary. Don't compromise. Let there be no competition for the, uh, for the uh, fatherhood thing that you, the demand of fatherhood that your son and daughter will need. Don't sacrifice it for corporate success and glory. Uh, corporate success and glory will come and go away. They might find someone better than you. What if your health suffers, isn't it? What if your company loses everything in a post-COVID world? So it's not worth it. Family is primary. So if you invade the family, as global brands are doing, you can break the world, break a nation. You can profit, rob, do the buccaneer thing if you break up the family. Don't let that happen. So point number eight, you will see their foibles, fathers. There are no perfect fathers, but you will gain more from their strengths. Yes. Eight, they will see I made a mistake. That is better than saying I'm sorry. Uh, they will say I made a mistake, forgive me. So fathers know how to empower sons. Fathers trust sons with judgment. So the son feels, okay, my boss loves me to have a, have a, have a discernment. He, he's not overriding me. So I'm using the father-son, father-daughter context in family, in workplace, in education, and of course, we had founding fathers of nations, isn't it? We had founding fathers of, of, of for instance, scouting, Lord Baden Powell. Now, nasty things are said of fathers these days on the racist issue. So as, we, as I said, fathers did have their foibles. So they, uh, they, they don't hide their foibles. Fathers are secure in what they can do. They are not insecure about what they can't do. I'll repeat it. Fathers are secure in what they can do. Fathers are not insecure about the things they can't do because they have so much they can and help the junior to uh, get up. Then uh, that is point number eight. Point number nine, fathers work with significance. 
because success they have already got. So there are three stages of the development of man. Three stages of the development of man. Father. Uh, now I should start the, the young child, young man and father. Young child, young man and father. So who is a child? The development of man. Child is the character who says, give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy, I want that, I want this, you know. Wherever they go, they are window shopping. Some people, they are a lot of money. They are 45 years old, 55 years old, but they are still on the motor. Give me what I want as soon as I want it. Childish, peevish, but you can go through life like that. But we need to mature and we become young men. What do young men like to do? Look what I'm doing. See, I can do this. So young men always want to prove I can do. And corporate uses them very effectively and also abuses them. You can see them as consultants. I want to do. No end to the research they are doing. And it doesn't help patients. It doesn't help their department. It is only helping their name and more platforms. That's my feel. In every field you will find those young men, they may be 70, but they have not gotten over the fact. They just want to do, they want to be the top dog all the time. Uh, so we need to recognize this and we need to grow up, isn't it? So uh, in, in man's uh, progression, uh, kids are those who always want immediately whatever they want, I want it, I want it, I want it. Uh, everything exists for themselves, the company, everything, everything exists for themselves. Then the young men who always want to do and prove, uh, they must be have. They could be having a father fracture. They must have, have might have had a father who said, uh, "Just prove to me." Uh, fathers don't talk that language. Fathers say, "Son, I know you can do this." That's father's language. Prove and show is not father's language. It is Pharaoh's language. What are you? We have to think and see. Uh, so then you really have fathers who are not about doing, but about being. They add value. They know the customer is king, yes. They, are, they know profit is important, yes. They know brand name is important, but they also know value is the thing people come back to. W what value did I get in the whole bargain? It's not only about the substance, the stuff he bought, it's the way it was handled. That's called value. So fathers foster three things, identity, the belonging people feel, identity, then value and worth. When they are working with you, feel they feel value and worth. They are, they are such, such a company. Who's my chairman? Oh, yeah. So some chairman carry that. Some consultants carry that. Some judges, senior lawyers carry that, isn't it? Hopefully some legislators and politicians carry that honor, that people feel uh, it's, it's an honor to work with him. Our fathers. Uh, so fathers work with identity that comes from belonging. You either birthed him or you birthed the most valuable thing for him in the work field. So the first employee is very important. Choose him carefully. Choose him carefully. First employee is important because the first employee, your senior, may birth something in you that you always remember the belonging that got born in me because of that person. Of course, your biological father births you. So if there's a, fr a fracture of bonding, same with biological mother, you, you, you are going to have that sense of feeling torn, wounded inside, tossed. Uh, that means uh, you didn't find your place. You know what tossed means? You keep changing companies. Uh, sometimes you keep changing career. You keep changing company. Uh, please don't change your wife. Marriage is for life. Wife is for life. Marriage is for life. It fractures you in a way. It is almost impossible to redeem. Please, attend on this more than anything else. So don't play around. It's irreplaceable. So what does identity and belonging involve? Your biological birth, your marriage, how you treat children and they treat you, and how the work capacity got birthed in you, who was responsible, honor that person, if possible, lifelong. There is a birth of work ability. 
work character, work ethos, work field. You, you, you obviously you had the talent. God gave the talent. So it's a good gift. It goes like this. Every good gift comes from the Father of Light. And every good and perfect gift. Because between the good and the completion, there can come a fracture. Then you know you are capable of so much, you got only this much. Between that gap, you have hurt, you have humiliation, you have hatred, you have fear. And the same cycle happens again and again. That is called hexes. Don't know why. It happens again and again. You understand that. So this identity involves your biological birth and your marriage and your relationship with your kids and how did work get birthed in you because our uh, the man has to do a lot, lot with work. So the way we have engaged work and the way work has engaged us, it becomes part of our identity. Then comes value and worth. So what adds value and worth? So we have this spiritual definition, God is our father. So we say our father in heaven. You know, for a son, for a long time, his identity, worth and value, and his success and significance, that's the third thing I'm going to talk about, is dad. With dad is his world. So when dad is his world, till the age of 12, please dad be his world. Please dad be his world. After 12, they begin to feel peers are more important. What they do is more important. After 14, they are listening to others, not to you. So please, before 14, let them listen to you. Let them know that father gave stretch and step. Father gave thrill and peril, meaning father packaged it all that. So when unwanted thrills, bad thrills come, they will say, my thrill manager is my dad. And the digital screen ruins all that. Digital screen tutors the son in thrill with no breaks. I repeat, digital screen with games and fast cartoons tutors your son and daughter in thrill and fast thrill without breaks. So watch their screen life. I have lots of clips on this. Please send a WhatsApp to me if you want any of these clips. It's free. So I took this uh, point number nine. I took some length of time to explain to you uh, how the identity the, and the belonging, values and worth that you inculcate as father at home at work, wherever else. Work involves profession, isn't it? Then comes the relationship between success and significance. Success is, you sense, the good gift in this season of life. Say you are 33. In this season of life, I got one third good. Then, next third comes from 33 to 43 years that you have now failed. Your good gift has got two-thirds completed at 43, then half-life begins. 43, 45, 46, 47, 48. What is happening? You need a second win. You need a breather. That's football or rugby language or cricket language. Second innings has come. That is the next third of your life is about now you have become, in the first two thirds, you became fruitful. So God said it like this, God bless them to be fruitful, multiply. Increasing is inside man. You can't say, I don't want to increase. I have annihilated that. No, 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 it won't, it won't happen like that. There's a desire that inborn, designed desire, that multiplication must happen so that you might share with someone. Then comes fill and fulfill what your measure is. So no point getting jealous about someone else's measure, you see, uh, because that person may have a measure to own a company, run a company with 10,000. Your measure may be to run a company with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. So measures differ. Uh, so that fill and fulfill. Then comes toward uh, help others to get what they can get. Did you understand that? That steward success significance after the age of 43 initially also you do these things but after the age of 43 you are doing that to your 15 year old son 
he's more important than you. Oh, you're 43 years old. What is important? Gym, muscles, rotarian. What's important at 43? Lions. I challenge you. What's important at 43? Your 15 year old daughter, your 15 year old son, which means begin early. By their 12, oh, let's say you married at 28. By when they are 12, you're 40. What's important at 40? Your 12 year old. Because if you don't attend him, attend on him at that stage, he'll become 14 and say, Dad, fly a kite. I can manage on my own. We may have said that when we were 21. But now, 14 year olds, they think they can do themselves. So please, please, this is not a laughable thing. Uh, why am I speaking like this? I'm director of Columbia Empathic Learning Center. So I, every week I see kids coming, ranging from six years to 22, 23. Parents have lost it. So I had to sit down. I take about 40 minutes with one person. So if you uh, uh, want an appointment like that, it's free. Please send a uh, request to that WhatsApp number, 77 249 or on this call, you can even ring my, give a telephone call to my secretary, 077-151-2801. Yes, so we make an appoint, you make an appointment and then I sit with dad and mom. Both have to sit together. Dad usually says, I have cocktails, I have rotarian, I have this and that. No way. Dad has to come and own the problem. Otherwise, dad only wants to see the prize at the end of the running. No, dad. You have to be there from the beginning. And then you have to be there when glory fades. You have to be there when glory fades. You can't hand that over to wife only, mother only. You see? So from 43, uh, success you have got. Fruitful, multiplied, you filled and fulfilled. Now comes success, steward what others have, significance. Did you understand that? There's a fifth dimension that God spoke about. Take dominion over the evil that will invade your boundaries, your son's life, daughter's life, your work field. You know, in, in 1972, I entered medical faculty and I had to take the oath of Hippocrates then. Uh, so we had to say at one point, I, uh, I will not allow. I will not help a woman to procure an abortion. That was part of the oath of Hippocrates as he originally gave it. But exactly in 1972, in the middle of the year, IMA International Medical Association changed it. Now doctors don't have to say that. And you know what follows. You know what follows, yes. So, success toward and take authority over the boundary with your son when he's 10, when he's 14, when he's 18, with your daughter, 16, whatever. Take authority over the boundary. Same with professions. What you allow in your profession, what you allow in your home, family, what you allow in your workplace, it's called take authority. Uh, it, it, uh, mind the boundary, mind the fence. Dad, you have to do that. You can't ask mom to mind the boundary. That's not her business. You have to. Okay, I took a lot of time on the 10th point. It covered a lot on this identity and belonging, value and worth, success steward, success steward, and uh, significance. So significance is how effective and influential you have been in another's life. Okay, uh, then we go to point number 10, uh, point number 11. Eleven. When in trouble or in doubt, if you are a father, they remember you. Once they, they felt that fathering nature in you, so father may be boss, of course home, father in the home, father in the boss, you may be a teacher, uh, then you may be a mentor, coach, they are all kinds of, they, they, are, they are a father kind, isn't it? They are the benefactor kind. When the benefactors are not there, Pharaohs scowl, howl, growl, make, break without straw. In a recession economy, they want uh, marketers to 
uh, salespeople to keep targets, not only salespeople, even the director will be sacked if he does not keep targets. So fathers are those who mind their welfare in the heart more than you mind the targets in the head. That's the definition of a father. So 11, when in trouble or doubt, they will remember you. Even when it doesn't, number 12, even when it doesn't profit them, fathers will help you listen and listen to you. In fact, fathers are they who listen more than talk. So 12 uh, little points maybe. I'm wondering whether to add something on stones. So there's a famous statement, when, a, when, when a your son asks the father for stones, will he give, when he asks for bread, will, will you give him stone? So what is this com comparison contrast between stone and bread? Bread is what you consume, good for you. Stone is what you should not consume. Bread is what you should give people. Stone is not what you should give people. So giving the digital screen when your son is asking for your companionship would be giving stone instead of bread. Secondly, that statement said, when your son asks for egg, will you give a scorpion? What's an egg? An investment for the future. Uh, so a scorpion is a toxic thing. That is, you are developing a toxic thing. Egg is good protein that's going to get into your bones. So scorpion is a kind of toxin that you have allowed into your life and it, in, it, that it, it, it poisons your nature, you know. That's what the scorpion is. It poisons your nature. Watch it in the work field, watch it in the home, uh, in, in the struggle for existence when the fittest has to survive. Uh, some people think like that. Such, such thoughts are the scorpions, toxins, poisons that work in the lives of people. Thirdly, uh, when a son asks for fish, will you give a serpent? That's quite in the context of work. You know, when fishermen cast the net in those days, uh, even in Morutu or Nigambu, you ask them, or in Muthur, we saw this once in, in Mulatu, uh, where they had drawn in with the net a big snake, you know, big sea snake, sea snake. So that is in your job, serpentine ways of doing things, you understand, in earning a livelihood. Uh, these are three areas in which you need to take care. Stones, scorpions, serpents. Yes. So thank you for listening. We'll join again midday broadcast another time. Please pass on this clip for others. I think it's a useful clip. Thank you.